Hello, hello. This will be the beginning of a new video series where I cover African wildlife, simply titled African Animals. For this episode specifically, I'll be going over the largest of living primates, the gorilla. There's two main species recognised, which is the western and eastern gorilla, each of which are then split into two subspecies. The western gorilla is split into the western lowland gorilla and the cross river gorilla. The eastern gorilla is split into the eastern lowland gorilla and the mountain gorilla. Eastern gorillas are larger and typically have longer, silky hair, whilst western gorillas are smaller and have shorter, softer hair. Mountain gorillas differ from all other gorillas via having shorter arms, larger teeth and jaws, and a shorter nose. The western lowland gorilla is the most numerous in terms of territory, smallest in terms of weight, and the one you see in zoos. The eastern lowland gorilla is the second largest and second most common. The mountain gorilla is the most famous because of the film Gorillas in the Mist, which is based on a book, and they are also the heaviest of all gorillas, and by extension are the largest living primates. And the Cross River Gorilla, alongside with the Mountain Gorilla, is known as the most threatened of gorilla species, both being placed in the top 25 for most endangered primates. I'm not going to bother going over everything we do that brings them closer and closer to extinction, but if you want to, you can read that yourself in the form of this article I came across on SeaWorld's website. Because I guess it's cruel to hunt one of our evolutionary relatives to extinction, but punishing the panda torpedo for not doing its performance correctly isn't. To put it simply, gorillas aren't exactly in the best position to thrive in due to diseases such as Ebola, warfare between countries that they inhabit and the bushmeat trade, genetic isolation, and numerous other things. Just to give an example, according to SeaWorld's website, the Eastern Lowland Gorilla was estimated to have a population of 17,000 in 1988. Meanwhile, according to a 2022 article from the website azanimals.com, there is now less than 5,000. So the Eastern Lowland Gorilla isn't in a good situation. And let's not even mention the Mountain and Cross River Gorillas and the situation they're in. One thing you can do if you want to try and save the Eastern Lowland Gorilla, which is also known as Guru's Gorilla, after the person who discovered them, is recycling your old phones. Cell phones require a special metal to be produced, which is currently only found or primarily found in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and demand for cell phones has increased the need for this mineral, meaning that mining has illegally expanded into nature reserves for gorillas. This obviously destroys their habitat, and the miners are known to shoot for gorillas in order to get something to eat. Recycling phones decreases the need for this mineral and the need for mining, so I highly recommend that if you decide to get rid of your phone, do recycle it instead of just letting it go into landfill. On a more light-hearted note, the Western Lowland Gorilla has the absolutely hilarious and very serious scientific name of Gorilla Gorilla Gorilla. Hey, what should we call this thing? We shall call it Gorilla. And this one? Gorilla Gorilla. What about this one? Gorilla Gorilla Gorilla. Found a new one. Let me guess. Gorilla 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 Gorilla? No moron, his name's Clive. Males of much larger members of the species, reaching sizes of 160 to 220 kilograms depending on the species, which is more than double the average weight of females, which are 60 to 113 kilograms depending on the subspecies. As a comparison, when they are born, they only weigh about 2 kilograms. Female gorillas stop growing at around age 8 in terms of size, though may continue to mature sexually. Males, on the other hand, start to go through a massive growth spurt, where their heads broaden, they become much more robust and muscular, and when they hit age 11 to 15, depending on what you read, they have finished this growth spurt. When they reach that age, males get the patch of silver or grey fur on their back, which is what has given the males the name Silverback. Alongside this comes their impressive strength, which makes humans look piss poor in comparison. Just going off of videos and stuff I've read here and there before even getting the idea for this video, a silverback can lift somewhere between 400 kilograms and 3.6 metric tons. I think 3.6 metric tons is a bit of an exaggeration, but I can easily see one lifting 400 kilos. 
and according to one thing I read through while writing this script, studies have put gorillas as being able to lift anywhere between 4 and 27 times their body weight, with the most common number being 10 times. So that means if we're talking a 4 times estimate, a 220 kilogram gorilla can lift 880 kilograms. And if we're talking the 27 times estimate, we're talking nearly 6 metric tons. But if we're going off of the 10 times estimate, it's about 2.2 metric tons. Personally, whether they can lift 4 or 27 times their body weight, I wouldn't want to mess with one if I'm gonna be honest, even if they are known to be peaceful animals by nature, unlike what they were thought of as being as a result of a certain big monkey movie. Really, it's only the males that get aggressive, where they do stuff like the famous gorilla chest beating, however that doesn't mean they're out to get you. According to one thing I remember reading, out of 1000 plus charges from silverback gorillas, only 0.5% of these charges resulted in the silverback continuing on the attack. If you are still scared about gorillas attacking, then I highly recommend not making eye contact for extended periods of time. According to a Wikipedia page I stumbled across, there was a gorilla in Germany named Bokito that went on a rampage, including dragging a woman for tens of meters and rampaging through a cafe. Apparently the lady was warned about making eye contact and smiling at him because those are signs of aggression in gorilla society, but she pulled that we have a special bond card. I think it's safe to say that thought exited her mind when Bakito decided to break some of her bones by dragging her nearly 100 meters across the zoo. So if there's one thing we can learn from her stupidity there, it's don't stare at these animals for long periods of time and smile. Also, according to the Wikipedia page about this, after he was recaptured, one company made 2,000 Bakito viewers to disguise the user's eyes. And the word Bakito proof that pretty much means strong enough to withstand an angry gorilla, became word of the year in 2007 in the Netherlands. Also, due to their strength, this has led to a lot of people making comparisons between them and other large powerful animals, such as grizzly bears, lions, tigers, jaguars, and I just realised these are all from Wild Scientius. The reason I bring this up is because I believe that people need to stop making these comparisons between gorillas and whatever large extant predators there are. If you want a more in-depth idea of what I'm saying, I highly recommend checking out a video from the YouTube channel Seth the Programmer about the grizzly bear versus gorilla debate. Basically, people think that because gorillas are smart and have a lot of strength, they are pretty much unstoppable. However, as he pointed out, gorillas don't really seem to be smart at fighting and don't know how to use their strength in fights. People say that in a fight with a grizzly bear, it could just rip the bear's jaws apart, but when you watch gorillas fight, they seem to be more like psychopathic slap boxes coked out of their mind, relying pretty much just on smacking their opponent enough times to try and win. Meanwhile, bears and big cats, such as leopards, lions and tigers, are smarter at fighting, relying on their strong jaws and sharp claws. Yes, gorillas have strong jaws themselves, but as he pointed out, they don't seem to use them that much beyond grinding up food. So even though a lion has a bite force half that of a gorilla, you'd probably find that a lion would win the fight. I'm not saying gorillas are weak animals by any means, I'm just saying it's ridiculous to think they are lion or tiger killers. Leopards are the main predators of gorillas besides humans, and leopards are known to successfully kill gorillas despite being roughly half the size. So a fight with something two or three times the size of a leopard isn't going to end well for the silverback. Anyway, in the wild, gorillas live in groups known as troops, which is made up of a dominant adult male, known as the silverback, and adult females, who he has breeding rights to, and they're young. There may also be other silverbacks and young males called blackbacks, however they aren't allowed to breed unless the dominant silverback gives them permission, though I only found one website claiming that, so the part about the silverback allowing other males to mate probably isn't true, especially when you consider the animals we're talking about. These groups can be fairly large by the way, according to the WWF's website, they average around 5 to 10, but can sometimes be up to 50 individuals. The dominant silverback's role besides making decisions for his troop is to protect them from predators, such as leopards and crocodiles, and from what I've heard, chimpanzees as well. And according to a video I watched from the YouTube channel Wired, 
where they had a primatologist go over all the great apes in Planets of the Apes, silverbacks are also known to adopt gorilla infants whose mothers have died. They even do this for infants that aren't genetically their own, going as far as letting them sleep in their nest. However, I should note that numerous things I came across claim when a new silverback takes over a troop, he kills the previous silverback's offspring, so I'm a little skeptical on that last bit. And one website claimed adoption in general has only been recorded once or twice. Silverback gorillas are also known to join in and play with the gorilla infants from time to time. Due to their nature of being the guardians of their troop, they're also known to be the more aggressive members of the species, doing stuff such as chest beating and charging opponents, for most of these charges tend to be bluffs, as mentioned earlier. Other males tend to leave their troop and go off in search of females to breed with, though might also stay in the troop. Males are also sometimes known to leave the troop in groups of three or four, staying together until one of them leaves upon finding a lone female. Females will also leave the troop due to their ranking in it being dependent on when they joined the troop, leading to them going off in search of a lone silverback instead, since they'll be more protected by the silverback than later joining females. Later joining females only get a higher ranking if they have an infant. Speaking of which, pregnancy lasts for about eight and a half months and most gorillas only have one child at a time, with twins being extremely rare. In the case of twins, the female will typically leave one to die. It's also hard to tell if a female is pregnant due to the fact their bellies are already fairly sizable to help them break down foliage. Though according to SeaWorld, they are known to have inflated knuckles for a brief time while pregnant. Females typically only reproduce every three or four years, which on top of them only having one child at a time, makes it hard for them to increase their species population. They also have a high mortality rate, meaning that females might only produce surviving offspring, as in offspring that makes it to adulthood, every six or eight years. When infants, males and females are fairly similar looking, and it's only when males get older and they enter their black back phase do the differences start to show. As both mature, they slowly start to learn to walk and start to eat more and more plant matter. Gorillas feed primarily on plants, for according to azanimals.com, eastern lowland gorillas have been recorded eating small lizards here and there. And most, if not all, gorilla species are known to eat some amount of insects, such as termites, and apparently even snails, according to SeaWorld. According to the San Diego Zoo, if I remember correctly, unlike chimps, which use sticks, gorillas simply smash and tear open the termite mounds they find. Western gorilla species tend to have a diet of about 67% plant matter, whilst eastern species are 87%. A lone male is believed to need to eat more than 18 kilograms or 40 pounds per day in order to sustain his body. From eating leaves and other plant matter, they get a lot of water from both the plants and the morning dew buildup. However, you'll probably find that they will still drink often from bodies of water. Gorillas are also known to build nests they sleep in. They build two a day, one during the midday for when they take a nap and another for when night approaches. The same nest is never used twice due to them moving throughout the day, and some smaller gorillas, such as females and young males, are known to sometimes sleep in the trees. Silverback males are too big to sleep in the trees, so they are forced to camp out on the ground, where they are more vulnerable to predation. They make these nests on the ground via dragging and bending leaves around themselves. Also, when it comes to gorillas, I think it's pretty much necessary I go over intelligence. Gorillas are one of the smartest of the great apes. Like all great apes, they've been successfully taught sign language, with the most famous example being Coco the gorilla, who learnt 1,000 different words in sign language. Though some have argued whether or not she truly understands what she's saying in sign language. Another example, which is my personal favourite, is Am Bam the silverback gorilla, who was a western lowland gorilla living in a zoo in Great Britain. Am Bam learnt to walk upright like a human. According to one thing I remember watching, they believe he learnt this from watching visitors of the zoo, though according to an interview, they believe it's due to him being shown to be carrying something in the video, so he's most likely walking on two legs because he finds it easier than carrying stuff when on all fours. If I'm gonna be honest, I reckon he learnt it from the visitors, 
because I reckon I've seen several people walk like that where I live. In terms of appearances and medias, gorillas have made cameos or been the basis for quite a few characters, most famously King Kong. There was also a Kevin James film featuring a talking gorilla character named Bernie. There was also a film, as mentioned earlier, called Gorillas of the Mist, based on a book by Diane Fossey, who studied mountain gorillas until she died in 1985. And most recently, the new Transformers film coming out features a Transformer known as Optimus Primal, who transforms into a gorilla. And of course, you had 2018's Rampage, which features a silverback gorilla named George. And some final things I should add is that reportedly we share at least 98% of our DNA with gorillas and that on the IUCN red list all species are listed as critically endangered. The mountain gorilla was reportedly moved to endangered in 2018, though it looks like they've moved it back to critically endangered. And all gorilla species can be found across eight different African countries, which are, get ready, Uganda, Rwanda, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Equatorial Guinea, Cameroon, Central African Republic, Gabon, and Angola. For a while, gorillas were in Nigeria, though they have reportedly disappeared from the country roughly 25 years ago due to habitat loss. Overall, gorillas are very interesting and goofy animals in my opinion. Unlike the sort of stereotype they get from King Kong, gorillas are very peaceful, family oriented animals who spend most of their day eating and sleeping. I recommend also checking out everything I've listed below in the description of this video, since there might be stuff I've forgotten to include or didn't know where to put. An example being one National Geographic article I came across about gorillas being witnessed studying a dead body of an unknown gorilla, with some believing this might be signs of mourning. Anyway, hopefully you learnt why we must reject modernity and return to monkey, and you will like and subscribe as a result.